Hello to everyone, <clears throat> I'm Leonardo Franco and today I will be your teacher and in this model of the lesson we will explore the world of haptic interfaces by learning how to build and use simple wearable haptic device called uh, Simple Timbo. This lesson will guide beginners through the process of creating functional haptic interface using basic components such as a microcontroller, a servo motor and 3D printing. Um, I want to point out that this should be a self-paced experience and uh, at each point you can pause the video to follow up with the tutorial. The objective of this course is to learn which components are needed to build such a wearable interface to introduce the educators to the 3D printing their own parts, avoiding to rely on other educators' devices, to provide the educators with the knowledge and skills required to program a microcontroller, and to test the build device in an immersive VR scenario. Uh, but uh, first of all, let's present this device. Uh, Simple Timor is uh, an open source and low cost project to build your own VR enabled haptic device. It's designed to be easy to assemble and use and can be used with Unity Virtual Environment Development Platform. Moreover, the 3D models for the device and all the resources that are present in uh, this lesson, this video lesson, can be downloaded or visited through this guide uh, that you find in the link below, simpletimble.redox.io, etc. In the following, we will analyze the role that each of the hardware components we will have in our Timble. Uh, we have an ESP32 microcontroller, an ESP8266 microcontroller, battery shield, a battery, a switch, uh, a standard servo motor, and uh, some 3D printed parts. But let's dive in and see the role of each component. The ESP32 microcontroller is uh, the dongle in our application. It will uh, be connected via USB to the computer to bridge wirelessly received data into the computer using serial communication. The use of the popular ESP32 microcontroller will allow us to use the ESP now protocol to have a reliable connection success between models. Uh, moreover, we don't have to deal with Bluetooth protocol variation, which may not be present or vary from one PC to the other. The ESP8266 uh, is a wearable ESP microcontroller, which will receive data wirelessly from the dongle connected to the computer, and this microcontroller will control the two servo models which are inside each timbo. We will need also uh, other electronic components. Those parts are useful to make the connection of all components faster. The battery shield is used to add the circuit necessary to charge a lap of battery, and the proto shield is used to make easily connection between a microcontroller, servo motors, and battery management circuit, and, and a switch to turn off our device. Uh, there are also other mechanical and mechatronic components uh, that we will use. Those parts are necessary to assemble the timbre. The servo motor is needed to convert the electrical control signals to the mechanical motion necessary to apply the pressure to the fingertip pulp. And velcro strips are necessary to secure the timbre to the finger and the neoprene tape is applied to make the timbre more comfortable. Even though in total uh, is 104 euro in materials, we advise the reader that some costly items such as the LiPo battery or the microcontroller are sold in more than one unit. So the cost for a single pair of timbal could be reduced under 230 euros. So we advise to working groups. And now, in this session, we will guide you to 3D print all necessary components for the build. Here you can see some features of the simple timbal, and uh, we will now tell what each part's function is. The function of the main box is um, the main box is the central 3D printed part, which houses directly the motor and accommodates the shape of our finger. Uh, the function of this 3D printed part is to provide a mechanical linkage between the servo motor and the figure and ensure that the actuation part is precisely, precisely aligned with the fingertip pulp. 
uh, the 3D printed part serves as, as a connector that translates the rotational motion of the servo into a precise alignment with the fingertip, resulting in accurate and consistent squeezing of the fingertip pulp. One suggestion is to use a file to send uh, the part, uh, the guide part, allowing the rack to move smoothly. This, uh, uh, okay. the, this, uh, these are the rack and pinion, these two 3D printed parts are the rack and pinion will, which will be mounted inside the thimble to convert the rotary motion of a servo motor into linear motion. The rack is a tooth bar with that meshes with the pinion and a gear with, small, a gear with a small number of teeth. When the pinion rotates, it drives the rack in a linear motion, resulting in a precise and controlled movement of the thimble. In addition to converting rotary motion to linear motion, the rack and pinion mechanism also includes an ergonomic fingertip envelope at the end of the rack. In this slide, we can see on the right the 3D models of the rack and pinion uh, positioned are they should be placed when printing with a fuse deposition 3D printer. Okay, the, the two 3D printed parts are the main box cover and the rear cover, which serve important functions in the overall design. The main box cover is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also functional, as it interlocks with the main box. It helps to hold the servo motor in place, ensuring that it, it remains stable during use. This is essential for accurate and reliable manipulation of objects or instruments with the thimble. The rear cover, on the other hand, was designed with two main purposes in mind. Firstly, it covers the servo motor cables and holds in place with glue, uh, as the quality of cable soldering is notoriously poor. This ensures that the cable remains securely in place, preventing any unwanted movement or disconnection during use. Secondly, the rear cover holds the vector strip that is used to secure the thimble finger. This allows for easy and comfortable use of the thimble, ensuring that it remains securely attached to the finger throughout the use. Ok, now let's move on on the assembly of our device. The first step is to create the servo motor pinion assembly, uh, is to cut the, um, and place the servo motor adapter to the pinion. First cut the excess extremities of the servo plastic adapter and press fit it into the pinion, as you will see in this animation. Now we can mount the pinion adapter assembly to the motor shaft. This passage, this passage is uh, straightforward. You just need to use the pinion as a modified servo adapter. The next step is to insert the rack and assemble it with the servo motor pinion assembly. Uh, once you have the servo pinion assembly, you can mount the rack in the main box, then keeping the rack to its final position. Uh, so, the thimble to maximum compression, you can insert the servo pinion assembly, making sure to engage the pinion as low as possible on the rack. Now, you can mount the main cover on top of the main box by press fitting it in place. And in this step, we secure the servo motor connection. Cheap servo motors uh, such as SG90 do not offer political cabling, so to increase the life of such servo motors, it is strongly recommended to glue the cable uh, coming out from the servo chassis to the chassis itself. Now it's finally time to insert the back cover. You can insert the connector to, of the servo motor in the hole of the back cover. You can insert the back cover on the servo, but not completely. We need some space uh, for the next step. In the gap we left in the previous step, we can now insert the um, suitably cut velcro strip necessary to secure the thimble to the finger. After that, we can add the neoprene tape to lower the part of the thimble.
Now you can wear the simple thimble and test if the servo motor works, or with the uh, test, te servo tester, or by programming uh, uh, our microcontroller. The step is to solder two main DuPont connectors to our D1 Mini ESP8266 board, specifically uh, ground cable, uh, usually black or brown, and the power pin, usually red, respectively to the pin G, ground or ground, and the pin uh, 5 volt of the D1 Mini. The control cable of the two servo motors must be soldered to the I.O. pins D5, GPIO 14, and D6, GPIO 12, of the D1 Mini ESP8266 board. Another important thing to solder is a connector for the battery. The fastest way to go is to cut a piece of strip board and solder both the battery connector and the power cable to the servo motors. Uh, to the power pins uh, of the D1 mini board. Okay, now let's move on to the firmware section. Firmware, what, what is a firmware? Firmware is a type of software that is embedded into an hardware device. It provides the necessary instruction for how the device communicates with the other computer hardware. Firmware is typically stored in the read-only memory of the device and is often the first software to run when powered on. It is responsible for basic operations such as booting up the device, managing system resources and providing an interface for application to interact with the hardware. But how can we write and upload in our boards the firmware? With the help of a specific software named Integrated Development Environment. An IDE is a software application that provides comprehensive facilities to computer programmers for software development. It typically consists of a source code editor, build automation tool, and a debugger. An IDE can make it easier to write and debug code by providing features such as autocompletion, syntax editing, and debugging tools. To familiarize with the Arduino IDE 2.0 and write our first firmware code, we will write and upload the test code in, into our D1 mini micro microcontroller. This code is an example of testing if, you, if your device is working as expected. We have to first connect our D1 Mini ESP8266 board by using a USB micro connector to the PC. Now we can click on the black drop down menu which says select board. And now we can click select on other board and port. Another window will pop up. In the left part, there is a search bar. We can search for our specific board here. As soon as we write D1, we are left with the first option being our. Uh, in the right part of this pop up menu, we can select the COM port on which we have connected the board to identify which to select. Next to the one, uh, the option uh, where you find written USB. Select that. Now we can click on OK and the pop-up menu will be closed. Then in the bottom right corner of the ID will now appear which board we intend to program and on what USB COM the port is. The following code will help you verify that the device is functioning correctly and uh, all its components are working properly. This code will just move the servo motors as soon as the board is powered. After that, you can click the Upload button. Uh, you will notice the blue LED of the board flashing as the code is flashed in the microcontroller memory. At the end of the procedure, the code will be executed. And uh, as a result, our timbles will move for the first time, as you can see in the animation right now. Yes. Now is your turn to teach yourself. Please visit the Simple Timbal website at the following links and learn how to program the microcontrollers to make them talk to each other wirelessly. At the end of these tutorials, you will be able to control the position of the two timbals at the same time wirelessly and from the computer. In this section, we will see how to use Simple Timbal in an emblematic virtual reality application, grasping a virtual cube. 
To do this, we will use Unity, one of the most popular IDEs for designing both 2D and 3D applications such as games, but also VR scenarios. In order to track movements of our end, we will use the Leap Motion. The Leap Motion controller is a, is a end tracking device that uses a combination of cameras and inter infrared sensor to track the movement of hands and fingers with high accuracy and low latency. You can navigate to the link below. Uh, a tutorial will guide you step by step in installing the needed software. Once you install all the needed software, you can attach your Leap Motion to the PC and launch the Leap Motion Visualizer to check that it's working properly. You should see this. Uh, you can proceed to download the Unity project uh, to use the simple thimble in the link at the bottom of this slide, where you can find also uh, the, deta the detailed guide to, use, uh, to the use of this project. You can open the project using Unity Hub, as shown in this screenshot. Once you open the project, you should see this page of the IDE. Now, the only important thing to do is to insert the correct number of COM ports inside the C-sharp script that you will find in the path assets ESPWrite.c. You can open it by double-clicking its icon uh, in the project folder box of the IDE, and this will be opened in Visual Studio IDE. Now, we can see the ESPWrite.cs script. But let's, let's zoom in and, and see what we should modify. You should modify the COM number, which is, it, which is at line 14, according to the enumeration on your computer gave to the ESP32-based dongle. In this case, my dongle was numbered as COM21. Now make sure to connect both the ESP32 dongle and the leap motion to your, compute, to your computer and then open the Unity project. Okay, now click on Game, then Maximize on Play, and the click, uh, click the Play button. Now you should be able to see your hand in the scene when moving uh, your hand on top of the leap motion. By battery powering the timbles and touching the cube in the VR, uh, they should move, uh, the timbles should move as shown here in the animation. As you can see, when the avatar of my hand is in touch with the cube, the timbal starts moving, the corresponding finger uh, timbal will, will, will move. The final step is to wear the timbals and grasp the red cube, and you will feel the cutaneous haptic feedback of touching the virtual cube. If the cube falls outside the workspace and you cannot reach with your hand, um, you can press the button R on your keyboard to reset the cube to, any, to its initial position. During our lesson, we explored how haptic technology can, can make learning experience more immersive by introducing the simple table. We went over each component of the simple table, from Apple controllers to motor. We demonstrated how to 3D print the necessary part for assembly. Through a step-by-step -step tutorial, we showed how to put together the simple table. Additionally, we delved into that firmware uh, is and how it can be used to program a microcontroller board, allowing for greater customization of the simple timbre. Finally, we examined the possible application of the simple timbre in virtual reality, specifically by grasping a cube in Unity. By utilizing, by utilizing haptic feedback, we demonstrated how simple team can make virtual experiences feel more real and engaging. Overall, our lesson showcased the potential of haptic technology in creating more immersive and effective learning. Finally, I would like to thank you for your attention and wish to you a happy haptic grasping.